Who doesn't know about Julius Caesar? One of the greatest Roman generals and dictators of all time. Julius was the catalyst for the demise of the Roman Republic and the formation of the Roman Empire, which ruled the Western world for the upcoming centuries. Although his rule was relatively short, his name always got mentioned whenever someone mentioned Roman generals. He was a good ruler, but as a military general, he was second to none. He won countless battles for the Roman Republic. His most famous feat was when he won the civil war against his old friend turned nemesis Pompey and became the dictator of the Romans. Pompey betrayed Caesar when he was out on conquest and won the election of council. Caesar didn't like it and rebelled against the state. Before the conflict, Caesar had commanded the conquest of Gaul for over 10 years. Pompey and Crassus attempted to increase their power while Caesar was in Gaul, organizing the captured lands. Pompey was successful in 52 BC, he was chosen as consul without colleague and assumed nearly absolute power. Crassus had a less fortunate fate. After serving as consul, he was appointed governor of Syria with special privileges. However, he was overthrown by the Parthians, who resided in Mesopotamia and Iran. In 53 BC, Crassus was killed in battle at Caerae. Caesar's 1st and 15th legions were dispatched to the east at the request of the Senate. Caesar followed orders but learned that the legions had never been used in Syria. They stayed in Italy instead. He must have realized that people were watching him suspiciously. He began preparing his army in the Moselle Valley, far from the spies of the Senate. Hermeskill has been used to locate one of the camps. When Crassus passed away, only Pompey and Caesar left, and the Senate dreaded a civil war would break out, leading to the ascension of a king. The Senate was overwhelmingly in favor, 400 to 22 of both dynasties giving up their extraordinary commands before the consular elections scheduled for December 50 BC. Caesar was permitted to run for consul in 52 by the People's Assembly, raising the question of whether this was legal. After some thought, Pompey complied with the Senate's request. He was better off than Caesar. If the latter obliged, his immunity from punishment would end. Many people remembered Caesar's previous term as consul during the Spanish War, and Cato had accused him of war crimes in Germania. Caesar would be labeled an enemy of the state, and the Senate would be compelled to appoint a commander with exceptional authority if he disobeyed. Furthermore, it was apparent who this commander would be, Pompey. So, this was the detailed background of the Civil War. Now, let's get to the juicy part, Caesar's Civil War. On January 7, 49 BC, the Senate gave the order to Caesar to transfer command of his ten well-trained legions to a new governor. When Caesar learned the news in Ravenna, he was faced with a decision between going to trial and rebelling. Deciding that he preferred the honor of war to the humiliation of a trial, Caesar chose to revolt, paraphrasing his favorite poet Menander, the die is cast. The 13th Legion pushed to Ramini during the night of January 10 to 11, so that he could command the passes across the Apennines. He invaded Italy and started the Second Civil War by crossing the Rubicon River. Nine of Caesar's legions were still on duty in Gaul, so his perspectives did not look good. But as it happened, the Senate had made a terrible error. It had assumed that the towns of Italy would send troops to defend the Senate's authority and the Roman people's liberties. But Italy had little passion for supporting the senatorial constitution and had doubts about its defenders. On the other side, if Caesar's soldiers lost this one battle, they could never collect their pension. Any last reservations must have vanished when Caesar doubled the legionaries' pay. The Senate was helpless because it couldn't mobilize an army. Additionally, the legions that were in Italy weren't trustworthy. Two months later, Caesar was in control of Italy and had pursued his adversaries to the heel of the country, from which Pompey and most senators escaped to Greece. Caesar didn't waste any time. He could see the situation clearly. Pompey was in Greece without an army, and the Senate had seven legions in Hispania without a commander. Caesar decided to launch an assault on the military first and gathered at least 14 fresh legions. When Caesar returned to Rome after a 10-year absence, he pardoned his opponents and established a new senate to approve his actions. Before it had even gathered for the first session, Caesar was already en route to Hispania. In the interim, he proposed a law granting citizens of Cisalpine Gaul citizenship to Rome. Caesar gathered several legions in the Marcellus area, crossed the Rhone and the Pyrenees with the legions and, not far from the present, Barcelona defeated the Spanish army in the Battle of Ilerda. Caesar once more exhibited mercy by sparing the opposing generals and disbanding the fallen legions. He went to Cordoba and Andalusia, where two legions led by Marcus Terentius Vero surrendered to Caesar. 
Caesar was appointed dictator after his return. He had spent six months away from Rome. While this was going on, Pompey was in Greece. Using the riches of the eastern provinces and a few client monarchs, he assembled an army of nine legions and a fleet of 300 ships under the command of Bibulus. Two more legions were still traveling to Greece. Pompey was prepared to battle Caesar when he returned to Italy. This was precisely what Caesar feared, and he attempted to send his veterans across the Adriatic. In January 48 BC, seven legions were transported to modern Albania despite the significant difficulties of winter navigation. Still, Caesar's navy was beaten, and the remaining four legions could not be sent to the east. Pompey and Caesar stayed at Dirhachium, modern Doris, for six months, where they constructed massive fortresses facing one another. Caesar's colonel Mark Antony was able to reinforce him with the help of the other four legions. However, the unified force was beaten, leaving Caesar with just one option, march inland, pass the Pindus Mountains, and defeat Pompey's pursuing army somewhere in Greece at a more favorable location. Finally, Caesar's more seasoned soldiers defeated Pompey's larger army in the Battle of Pharsalus. Nearly 6,000 Roman soldiers died on the battlefield, and Caesar observed the senators' bodies as dusk fell and said, well, they would have it thus. In four new Caesarian legions, Pompey's soldiers were recruited. They were dispatched to Syria's defense in the east. Caesar's legions were ordered back to Italy. Some of these men had been in his employ for 12 years and were eagerly anticipating their pension. Pompey survived the Battle of Pharsalus and marched to Egypt, pursued by Caesar. When they got there, they discovered that Pompey had been killed by Ptolemy Xai's men, a 10-year-old monarch, trying to win Caesar's favor in a dispute with his older sister Cleopatra VII. The outcome was different because Caesar was enraged that he was denied the opportunity to pardon his enduring enemy Pompey. Caesar at least claimed to have stated that. He must have known that Pompey the Great was unwilling to accept a pardon. Caesar fell for Cleopatra's charms when they first met in Alexandria, and when the Alexandrian War broke out, he sided with her, defeating Ptolemy in the spring of 47 BC. The body of the boy was discovered in the Nile. Caesar and Cleopatra were able to spend some time together after taming Egypt, at least long enough for Cleopatra to claim she was expecting their son Caesarion. However, soon after, Caesar hurried to Asia Minor, where Pharnaces II, the son of Mithridates of Pontus, had rebelled against the Romans and allied himself with the Sarmatian tribe. At Zella, Pharnaces was beaten in a quick battle. The dictator was free to return to Rome after defeating Pompey and calming Egypt and Asia. Now, Caesar was the uncontested leader of the whole Roman Republic. He conquered the entire Roman region and small neighboring empires. During his reign, the Roman Republic was converted into the Roman Empire and ruled the Western world for centuries. Caesar never got a sincere Senate that looked after the best interests of the empire and its emperor. This was the main reason for his downfall and early demise. During his entire reign, he always got senators who were looking for their interests. At last, on March 15, 44 BC, he was stabbed 23 times by his Senate and died on the spot. So this video is over now. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date on our future content. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and what you'd like to see from us in the future. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.